Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. In today's lesson, I'm going to be covering a high-level introduction into the attack simulator functionality that is part of Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Attack simulator does allow you to create campaigns and push out simulated attacks that mimic common social engineering techniques to the users within your organization or the organizations that you manage today. From there, you're able to identify users more susceptible to these types of risk assign them awareness training, and ultimately increase your security posture over time. Before I get into the actual administrator portal, I quickly want to reference a few statistics that reinforce the need for this type of solution within your organization. On the left-hand side, we can see here that one of the highest cited cases for a barrier to establishing effective defenses against cyber threats was actually low security awareness amongst employees. And this was a study conducted against thousands of companies across the world and through many different verticals. On the right hand side we can see 70 to 90 percent of all malicious breaches are due to social engineering or phishing attacks. So I think it's important to note that while you can layer in a technology stack that does help prevent and protect from these types of attacks, it is important to reinforce and continually have this type of awareness going on within an organization, especially with the rise of remote work, where people are now accessing corporate data from BYOD devices that aren't necessarily protected under IT's management. So with that, let's walk through some of these high-level features within the administrator portal. So I'm here within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I got here by going to security.microsoft.com. If you have one of the Defender for Office 365 Plan 2 offerings, which does come standalone as an add-on or as part of a higher level base plan like Microsoft 365 E5, for instance, you'll be able to go under email and collaboration and see attack simulation training here. When you click into this, you'll be brought to the simulations page here. This is where you can see historical simulations that you've run as well as launch new simulations. So launching the simulation here, I'm not going to go full depth because I'll do another lesson on that and do a deeper dive. But essentially here you're able to pick the social engineering technique that you want to use within your organization. You can provide it a basic name and you're able to select a payload that is available from a library of payloads that is given to you directly from Microsoft that will be adjusted over time. And clicking into these actually allows you to see the body of the payload and what the user will see. Additionally, you're able to select your own payload or create your own payload, which we will also do in a separate lesson. From here, you can target specific users or specific groups, and you are able to leverage an integrated experience from Microsoft, which gives you training as well, that you can assign to these users if they fail the simulation. This can be set to be due in a certain amount of days, and then from there, you're able to see what actual message the user gets if they were to click on a phishing link, for instance. So it's great to see the full end user experience here directly from within the wizard versus having to guess what that will look like or send test emails over and over to yourself before you actually send that out. Additionally, you're able to click on one of these pages here to see historical data about a simulation that you've run in the past. This will present you information about the users who clicked on links, the payloads that were used, the trainings that were completed, and things of that nature. On the payloads tab here, we are reintroduced to our complete library of payloads that are directly from Microsoft. Again, you can create your own here if you would like. I like that they have so many here to choose from, and a lot of them are super relevant, like the ones about COVID, for instance. They have ones about Zoom or Facebook as well, too. So I'd really identify which ones would work well for multiple organizations that you manage or within your own organization. A tool you may use like Zero, for instance, is one of the ones they have here, or Zoom, for instance, is another one they have here. But again, clicking into one of these brings you up to the page where you can actually see the body, any type of the variables that you would have within there, and you can see telemetry around simulations that were launched, if any. They also have this compromised rate here, which they are predicting will happen based off of whatever this message is. And then when you launch this, you'll actually get a actual rate. So you're comparing that against the compromise to see how your organization is improving over time. Simulation automations allow you to create a scheduled automation as a campaign that can span across many different payloads and the different timetables that can be randomized. I'll do, again, a deeper dive on this. It brings you through this wizard, though, which allows you to select the particular information you want to send out for this campaign itself. Again, you're walking through similar features and functionalities that you saw in the simulation tab, but you're able to select or randomize some of this information, like the payloads, for instance, 
target users are going to be very similar in that particular regard. The, the training is going to be very similar, but then once you do this, you're able to go through and actually create a fixed or randomized schedule for this to go out. So this allows you to be a little bit more hands-off with the simulations that you're conducting. Payload automations allow you to do similar things where you're able to trigger certain payloads based off of custom conditions being met, like the number of users that are uh, assessed or targeted for a particular simulation. The setting page here allows you to define certain criteria to meet certain thresholds like the repeat offender threshold. So it's saying here that if a person clicks on one of these malicious links for two times that they will actually be classified as a repeat offender and that be users that you would want to target for additional training or put additional security controls around. The enable end user training reminders is if you're leveraging Microsoft's end user training, they'll get email prompts about that over time. And then you could exclude certain simulations from reporting if you felt like they were messing up your data for some reason. So that's everything I wanted to show for you guys in this particular introduction video. Stay tuned for my next lesson where I go through and I actually set up and create a simulation. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next lesson.